In the Star Wars galaxy, weaponry is quite unique. Throughout the course of galactic history, many civilizations have developed different armadas of advanced weaponry in order to defend their homeworlds and combat the enemies of their people in the vast galaxy. While the Empire and the Republic were able to arm their forces with some of the most advanced artillery to date, blasters seem to be a predominant choice for most of the galaxy, including that of the Republic and the Empire, adaptable to all different shapes and sizes. Blasters are incredibly versatile and strong dirty weapons, though they seem to do very little in the presence of a gifted lightsaber wielder. Talented hands with the lightsaber were able to deflect blaster bolts with relative ease, which meant while these blasters were effective against other blasting-wielding opponents, enemies who sought to fight members of the Jedi or Sith Order had to adapt and find other methods of combat. And today, we will be talking about those other methods. So, what were some of the more effective weapons that one could use against Jedi enemies? And how did some of these armaments actually nullify the use of lightsabers completely? What were the easiest ways to kill a Jedi for someone who was not force sensitive and how could a regular person actually stand up to a member of the Jedi Order? Today, students of the Force, we will answer that question. And for those of you who are force sensitive and are worried about this, if you want to stay up to date with more Star Wars lore that may help you out in the future in traversing this wide galaxy, force push that subscribe button for daily Star Wars content. Now, let us begin. Let's begin with the weapon known as slug throwers, which were armaments that fired solid projectiles much like a bullet rather than energy blaster bolts. Effectively, they were equivalent to guns in our modern world which fired solid bullets rather than energy beams. And these proved to be surprisingly effective against Jedi for a few different reasons, despite them actually being not as advanced as a blaster was. When Jedi deflect blaster bolts, they are able to do so rather well based on the nature of their use of the energy. Bullets, however, aren't deflected by lightsabers well at all, but instead, they are either melted, shattered, or blown apart which means that the fragments are still incredibly dangerous for Jedi and lightsaber wielders, much unlike that of a blaster who is absorbed completely. Even if a Jedi is able to intercept a slug with their lightsaber, they can still run the risk of being severely injured by the shrapnel, which was heated by the lightsaber and redirected into multiple different directions. This meant that a Jedi could face scalding hot metal fragments being embedded into their skin with the velocity of a bullet, which is more than enough to incapacitate most sentient beings. And again, slug throwers were actually relatively commonplace in the Star Wars lore and in the wider galaxy. By many accounts, they were actually the precursors to blaster technology, and although they were widely phased out over the years, they still exist across the galaxy for anyone who would need to find one, as they were relatively easy to find and in most cases, cheaper than a normal blaster. When discussing the art of killing Jedi Knights and circumventing the use of lightsabers in the Force, it's impossible to not mention the civilization known for waging entire wars against the Jedi and being one of the most consistent threats to Force wielders in the entire galactic lore. We are of course talking about the Mandalorians, who are some of the most effective Jedi killers in the history of their order. With the Mandalorians pioneering their own weaponry specifically designed to kill a Jedi. One particular favorite of the Mandalorians is the use of flamethrowers, which are used repeatedly on Jedi Knights as they are unable to be deflected by lightsabers. We see the likes of Jango Fett chase even Mace Windu away by using a flamethrower, despite Mace Windu being one of the most gifted lightsaber combatants in the history of the Jedi. Flamethrowers were especially deadly to a Jedi because they could continue to cause damage to them even when a lightsaber was involved as there is no practical way to use a lightsaber to deflect a full flamethrower, and even a lightsaber was able to intercept some of the flames, a Jedi would still be severely burned, given the sheer surface area of a flamethrower's output in contrast with that of a lightsaber. A Jedi stands very little chance at warding off a flamethrower's full attack. And although some Jedi could use the Force to protect themselves, this was not commonplace, and flamethrowers were adopted by the Mandalorians because of their efficiency against the Jedi Order. They also figured out how to defend themselves against lightsaber attacks instead of just going on the offense, by utilizing the armor known as Plated Beskar, which of course we know, and is one of the few substances that are able to withstand strikes from an ignited lightsaber, making it invaluable to the Mandalorians who were the first to learn how to meld and craft it. And for into weapons of their choice. Ancient Mandalorians often used this metal to reinforce their armor and weaponry in order to stand up against the Jedi, and we see numerous instances where the Mandalorian weapons are able to contend with that of a lightsaber. 
In The Mandalorian, the Magistrate is able to hold her own for a brief time against even Ahsoka Tano by using a Beskar staff made of pure Beskar, which Din Djarin himself is able to use against Moff Gideon and the Darksaber later in the season. This means that a gifted fighter with a Beskar weapon could take part in a duel against a lightsaber, which became quickly incredibly dangerous for any Jedi. Mandalorians are also avid fans of explosives and attacks that cannot be easily parried, and this can be achieved a few different ways. Traditionally, simple explosions have been proven to be incredibly effective, with plasma grenades and widespread explosions being able to easily overwhelm a Jedi. During Order 66, we see numerous Jedi Knights, including Plo Koon, be killed while in ships or on speeders. This is because when a Jedi was dogfighting, they were unable to use the Force as effectively as if they were to be free-flowing, as well as of course the use of their lightsaber, which gave them an inherent advantage. Though of course many Jedi are gifted pilots, and the Force is incredibly adept at guiding Jedi, they are still limited to the maneuverability of their respective ships. And essentially, this evens the playing field. While the likes of plasma grenades and traditional explosives are effective, the use of sonic grenades also become common practice against Jedi. Though the effect was not quite the same as traditional bombs, sonic grenades were designed to disorient and distract Jedi Knights, cutting off their focus and awareness, thus hindering their connection with the Force. If a Jedi could not think clearly, they could not adequately defend themselves, and sonic grenades in tandem with talented marksmen or gifted combatants were oftentimes enough to overpower a Jedi. But these are a lot of the tactics and weaponry individuals use to hunt and kill Jedi, from a slug thrower to sonic explosives to flamethrowers, as well as of course noting the Mandalorians, who are the best Jedi killers in galactic history. So, students of the Force, I leave this up to you, and for the non-Force sensitives of this video, I have have a question as well. If you are force sensitive, do you believe that you could withstand this weaponry? And if you are not, if you had access to this weaponry, or if you do have access, do you have the whereabouts and skill to hunt and kill Jedi? And of all of these weapons that we noted, which do you believe to be the most effective? Again, my friends, if you haven't subscribed yet, we do daily Star Wars lore videos from news about Star Wars to deep lore to more surface level lore as well. And as always, my friends, may the force be with you and have a great day.